teamwork, good work. Yeah. <laughs> So in the last episode, I was left hanging by three fingers and the water was boiling and turbulent underneath me and I thought I was going to die. But I didn't. Hap came to my rescue. He picked me up, dusted me off, and paddled me to this little cabin <laughs> on the next falls. This shows that uh, chivalry is still alive and uh, interesting to note that Andrea sometimes thinks that, uh, um, that I was testing her on that trip. I don't think uh, I was testing her. Well, maybe a little bit I was testing her. But I think nature uh, and the river was testing her instead. But uh, she's tough, tough as nails. And uh, we're going to talk about, uh, on this episode, um, about the history of Cabin Falls. I'm Half Wilson. And I'm Andrea Wilson. There's a lot of empty cabins across northern Canada. And uh, I've been to many of them. And a lot of them have been dilapidated, the roofs leaking, and uh, ridden with mice and uh, it was no different when I came across the uh, cabin on Lady Avalon River in Tomogamy in 1970 it was under terrible disrepair but I did meet the uh, the third owner of the cabin and uh, he was delighted to have uh, a soon-to-be park ranger uh, to be a steward of the cabin and I used it for art trips and that. Before then the cabin was actually built by a lawyer from Cleveland he was a wannabe paddler. In fact, he paddled to James Bay back in one summer, the first recreational paddler to do that. He only lasted about four years at the cabin because of a tragedy that happened, which I'm not going to go into. And a lot of that history is in the book, The Cabin. I'm not, going to go, I'm not going to read from it or anything, but I think if people are interested in the history of the cabin, it's all here in The, uh, the Cabin, a search for personal sanctuary. Which you can order online at hapwilson.com for oh, yeah. $6.99. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh, the history is something that's very important to us and we try to keep it alive with repairs and just the little things that uh, I think that's, that re that's required uh, for almost a century old log cabin for us to be able to use and, and have our guests uh, still enjoy for, the, you know, for decades to come. Maintaining a 100-year-old cabin is not an easy feat. We've had to make many repairs over the years, including replacing sill logs, windows, and roofs. Yeah, so there's so many things that, you know, the, as you say, the cabin's almost a, a century old. The extreme weather conditions, environmental conditions there, um, water's always a problem. And uh, now I remember when I first found the, the cabin, the roof was leaking terribly. and. Uh, so, uh, and part of our responsibility to the, you know, to maintain the history of the environment of, of Cabin Falls is to high grade any of the materials we use off the property um, are high graded. A lot of the trees are already dead, but still usable. So we'll we'll oftentimes take those down and uh, take the bark, get the bark off right away uh, before the uh, insects get into it. So we'll season these and then we'll utilize these for repairs and in some of the newer cabins we'll use structural timber uh, right from the site. Now this work isn't done just by ourselves. We often have friends and family that come in that want to help us and they want to try the old way of, uh, of building cabins including using a draw knife to peel the bark off the logs. Um, as I was mentioning before, the sill logs need to repla be replaced, so that's the bottom log on the cabin, which because the cabin's built on bedrock, there's a lot of water that bounces back and, um, and then eventually the, uh, the logs rot out. The story about the, the floor was built after the cabin was built, so there was a big space all the way around. And uh, uh, I remember, this is quite a few years ago, when there was a lot of cracks in the uh, the oakum had been coming out of between the logs and uh, um, I woke up one morning I felt something behind my back and uh, rolled over and there was like a big garter snake curled up in the small of my back and I don't you know I don't freak out about snakes I, in fact I rather like like them and I picked him up put him back outside and soon enough he came back in probably through the same crack in the log and uh, fell asleep on my shirt on the bed However, <laughs> yeah, <it's not. laughs> I want to interject here <laughs> yeah. and tell uh, potential guests 
<laughs> that um, we have made repairs and uh, there are no longer big cracks in the walls that <laughs> snakes can crawl into your bed. <laughs> When we aren't replacing logs in the old cabin, we're usually bringing materials in, and that happens during high water season and peak bug season, which you can see by the bites on my neck. <laughs> well, it's part of what we do. I mean, we have, we have no choice in the matter. We just have to deal with whatever environmental conditions um, you know, that arise, and it's high water, bugs, cold water, and trying to maneuver stuff down, uh, which we do often. It's just part of uh, maintaining that historical uh, environment that actually the old cabin represents for us. And, uh, and it's important that, and I don't, Andrea attacked the floors in that cabin, well, almost 100 years of who knows what's on the floor, but beautiful, beautiful hardwood that was brought in by dog team or flown in and you don't often see that in, in, log, in old wilderness style cabins. And it had never been finished. Ne never. The, uh, the floor in this particular cabin was quite interesting because the cabin walls were built and then the floor was built. So it was basically a floating floor. So there was a, uh, a six inch gap all the way around the floor. So when I sanded it all down um, and then refinished it, we actually milled up boards and, uh, and connected the floor to the walls and then caulked everything just so we wouldn't end up with snakes in the cabin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the atmosphere uh, at Cabin Falls is really important, uh, not just to us, but our uh, visitors and guests uh, alike always comment on the nature of the surroundings and the old cabin uh, emanates that charm, that old wilderness charm. And it's, that's something that's very important to us. Just maintaining the grounds and, and, and the shape of that cabin, um, very important. And I just to go back briefly to uh, you know the historical references is that I uh, first met the, well, the third owner of the cabin and uh, we became very good friends. And, uh, um, Eventually, I became a third part owner of the cabin with, with his two sons, and then uh, later, uh, Andrew and I acquired uh, full ownership and just began doing a lot of renovations and just researching the history. Even the names of Cabin Falls, for example, um, or the several other falls you know, in that, that area, just so we can share that history with, like I say, our guests. And they always remark about, it's nice to pull out the, the Victrola every once in a while that I found tucked in the loft space of the old cabin. Crank that up and play some 1930s uh, music. So to get a virtual uh, idea of what we're talking about, Andrea's going to take you on a little tour. Welcome to the Rapidan. This is the original cabin built in 1931. This cabin has a lot of character and holds many stories within its log walls. We've recently built two new bunks made from reclaimed materials to accommodate up to six guests. In the 1970s, when Hap was working as a park ranger, he added this addition to the original structure. While refurbishing the cabin, we came across this treasure tucked away in a corner. It reads, Volume 1, The Rapidan Library, presented to Rapidan Syndicate, August 18th, 1931. Maintaining the history of Cabin Falls is very important to us, and it percolates down to the very details that we do when we do restorations and repairs. It's a very special area with a very special history, and we try to keep that alive. So detail is really important for uh, every facet of what we do at Cabin Falls and not just the fact that the cabin is located in one of the prettiest uh, wilderness parks in, in Ontario, in Canada as a matter of fact. A lot of people ask, well what's so special about Tomogamy? What makes it so unique and different? And uh, I'd like to tell you, a lot of those features are unique um, globally in fact. And uh, that's something that we, uh, we're going to talk to you about uh, in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>